Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for September 5th, 2023. It's the time of week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jepler and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython, which is a version of Python designed on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing your hardware from adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. The meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it con coincides with a U.S. holiday. Yesterday was the U.S. holiday known as Labor Day, um, so we are holding the meeting on a Tuesday. The, if you're watching the final video, the uh, notes document will have timestamps for you to uh, use so that you can seek to the part of the video that interests you the most. The meeting tends to run anywhere from 45 to 60 minutes, uh, which, but it is pretty highly variable. After the meeting, uh, we post a link to the next meeting's note doc um, in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages so you can update your notes at any time during the week. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, of course you can leave your hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. Uh, next up will be community news, a little review of the CircuitPython and Python on a hardware newsletter. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fun little glimpse of great stuff people are doing. The second is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. We'll take an overview of the entire project by the numbers and uh, get a sense of how things are going. Next is Hug Reports, the opportunity to highlight the good things folks in the community are doing, uh, whether it's coding, whether it's helping, whether it's uh, making a cool project, just uh, whatever you feel is worth recognizing uh, that has been done by the folks around you. Uh, then fourth is Status Updates, an opportunity to report on what you've been up to as an individual. Please take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week and what you'll be up to over the next week. And if you don't make it every time, you can uh, increase those uh, time bounds to encompass the work that you have been doing uh, since we last talked. And then last, if there are some items, we have a section called In the Weeds. If we need to discuss something uh, and it's not just a quick sentence or two, then this is the place for it. That can be something that you, we realize during status updates or other discussion or something you've identified ahead of time as just being too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. So community news. Uh, first up is driving large LCD displays with CircuitPython. Adafruit now has the Espressif ESP32 S3 talking to large dot clock displays like the seven inch 800 by 480 display above. There will be a display driver board with the S3 soon, along with a selection of displays, including rectangular, circular, and square. And there are links uh, in the notes doc to a Twitter and a YouTube. And I think you can also check out the, the store. We've got some, at least, pictures of boards that are similar to the ones I've been testing. It's pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have projects. We have lots of pixels. So uh, next is driving five LED displays with Python. Pi Maroney writes, what if I told you this 96 centimeter wide five panel 160 by 32 Interstate 75 powered pixel display can be started for just 105 pounds and driven from Python running on a Pi or a desktop PC for impressively smooth demos. And there are also uh, Fire Animations, and Conway's Game of Life. Check out the thread on Twitter, uh, currently known as X. And then the last pixels, I promise you, um, are DJ Devon's Feather Weather on four matrix panels with a Stemma BME688 sensor. And there is a link to the code on GitHub. And um, DJ Devon3 also joined us on Show & Tell last week, talked about stuff like bit depth, showed interactively how that changes things. Um, it looks like a cool project. And DJ Devon is someone who encounters a lot of weather. All right, so those are the few extracts I picked from a much larger uh, newsletter. Let me tell you about the newsletter. The CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter is a community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. The complete archives are at adafruitdaily.com 
slash category slash circuit Python. That link is in the notes doc. It highlights the latest Python and hardware related news from around the web, including circuit Python, Python and MicroPython developments. Do you want to subscribe to the newsletter? Just go to the front page of adafruitdaily.com. Do you want to contribute to the newsletter? There are a number of ways to do that. You can edit next week's draft directly on GitHub because like a lot of what Adafruit does, we do it out in public. Uh, so that's github.com slash Adafruit slash CircuitPython dash weekly dash newsletter. Uh, and yeah, you can put in a pull request. You can also tag your tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on X, formerly known as Twitter, or you can email cpnews at adafruit.com. And I can tell you 100% for certain that Anne will love getting whatever you're contributing, um, whether it's your own project, whether it's somebody else's project that made you go, wow, we love to see these things and spread the news about them because it shows what you can do with Python on microcontrollers. And so next up is the state of circuit Python, the libraries, and Blinka. So this is a look back at seven days of um, activity, both in the core, in the libraries, and in Blinka. And this is actually the report from Monday, so it excludes uh, things done during the day on Monday or so far today. And I, I chose to do that instead of two, Tuesdays just because then we don't miss a day that we didn't report on because the meeting was moved. Um, and uh, Scott and Katni and Melissa, let me know if you cannot read your normal sections, otherwise I will hand it off to you. So overall, across every GitHub repo, we had 18 pull requests merged from 16 authors and six reviewers. And I want to uh, mention a couple of those authors whose names aren't super familiar to me. We had M. Monatol, Phonix232, CleverCA22, and BGAP, B, excuse me, BJAP, who uh, wrote pull requests that we merged over the last week. So thank you uh, to everyone, but in particular to those folks who are uh, new or less frequent contributors. And thank you also to our six reviewers. We've got a lot of the usual suspects, but I also want to say thank you to Bill88T, um, as well as everybody else. Issues-wise, we saw five issues closed by 14 people and 12 open by 10 people. Issues numbers do trend up over time, and that's just the way it is, but it's nice to see the large numbers of people who are participating there among the issues. And with that, I will hand things off to Scott to tell us about the core. Hello, Scott. Thank, thanks, Jeff. All it right, is echoey so, there. Yeah, is it? A little bit. Uh, it's fine. Uh, uh, I'm going to get a couch and a rug in here at some point. So uh, update for me is that I'm in a new space, hence the echo. Um, there's construction outside too, so yeah, we'll, we'll work through that. Uh, numbers for the core, we had 14 pull requests merged from 12 different authors. Um, uh, Phonics, Phonics 232, BJAP, CleverCA22, BrainBoards are all relatively newer and frequent, so thank you to them. We had four reviewers, including Maker Melissa and Bill ADAT, so thanks to them as well. We had 28 open pull requests. Uh, a number of those are getting long in the tooth, so please take a look at those. Um, it is above the like 25 uh, benchmark that I tend to like to keep, although uh, it's been a long weekend. I'm sure we have some that we can fix and close uh, on this Tuesday. Issues-wise, we had three closed issues by two people and seven open by six people, for, so we're up four. Um, so we crossed uh, 700 mark to have 703 open issues. Uh, you can check those out at github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython slash issues. Uh, we use milestones to track prioritization for folks who are funded by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. We have six active milestones. We have 8.2x, which is our stable branch that will probably keep us going until 9.0 is released. Uh, we have seven open issues there. And then we have 50 open issues on 9.0. Uh, we have seven issues not assigned a milestone, so uh, those likely came in over the weekend and need to be triaged uh, and will be triaged. So that's the state of the core. Thank you, Scott. Next up is Katni to tell us about the many, many, many libraries. We do have many libraries. So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries as well as all of our community libraries. 
Uh, and across all of those repositories, we had two pull requests merged over the last week. Um, not anybody new in the authors or reviewers. Uh, and uh, it leaves us with 50 open pull requests. Uh, we had one issue closed by one person and five open by four people, leaving us with 640 open issues. Uh, 20 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including open pull requests um, listed out, uh, the list of open issues, and uh, you can check out, uh, if you're interested in reviewing, check out the open pull requests. If you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the open issues. Uh, leave comments in both places and let us know uh, what you think. Um, and if you're new to everything, Good First Issue is a great place to start. As well, we have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. And we're always available on Discord to help out. We want to make sure you can contribute in a way that works for you. Uh, in terms of library PyPI weekly download stats, we had 129,910 PyPI downloads over 312 libraries. And the top 10 libraries are listed in the notes. Uh, library updates in the last seven days, we had four updated libraries, it looks like, but no new libraries. Um, and if you're interested in those, they are also listed in the notes. And uh, that's where we are with the libraries. Thank you, Katni. And uh, last, but definitely not least, uh, Melissa will tell us about Blinka statistics. Hello. So Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. This week we had two pull requests merged by two authors and one reviewer. Uh, there are currently three open pull requests amongst all the repositories. There was one closed issue uh, by one person and zero opened. Uh, that le there are that leaves a uh, net of 102 open issues. And there were 10,335 PyPI downloads in the last week. Uh, 9,527 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 119 boards correctly. And that's it. Thank you, Melissa. Next up is Hug Reports. And if you are participating with us, uh, a general reminder, just be scrolled to the right spot so you're prepared to read off when I call on you. Um, all right. So um, I have a group hug, but I have some individual ones as well. One for Scott for keeping my standards high in the dot clock TFT pull request. Uh, another for so many community members submitting PRs, especially on the core. It seems like we had a, a really good number of non um, Adafruit people doing core PRs this week and in the recent past. And finally to Dan and Brent for continuing to work through the uh, issue with the Nina firmware certificates. And Dan, thanks in advance for the 8.2x update that should be coming out soon. So it is resolved for our users. Next, I've got notes from a couple of folks to read. Anik Data writes uh, that they have a hug for Toddbot for identifying my serial port in use when trying to update an NRF bootloader. Then from C. Grover, I have a hug report for DJ Devon for the weather live stream during Hurricane Idalia using a very creative approach to layering desktop and development board images. It was very helpful to see all the data and images on one screen as well as a hug for Toddbot for the Synthio foundational and invaluable hints and tricks page. It made it easy to start from scratch and get something special running right away. And next up is Dan. Hello. Hi. So um, I'm back from vacation. And thanks for mentioning uh, about the certificate issues. And I'd like to thank Brandon Justin, who I just talked to this morning, about the details of fixing the certificate issues. And also thanks to Clever, who's been doing uh, ongoing work on uh, the Broadcom port in various ways, which is uh, nice. Okay, that's it. Thank you. And next is DJ Devon 3 I have a big hug for all the CircuitPython developers dealing with the ESP IDF merge issues. And it seems like you all just need a big hug as things start breaking and all the issues start piling up heading into 9.0. Um, all of your efforts are appreciated and seen. A hug to Retired Wizard for uploading a 9.0 alpha build for the Matrix Portal S3 uh, dealing with the SSL handshake bug uh, discussion on GitHub. I was able to get my project on show and tell this week uh, thanks to your kindness, so thank you. 
and a hug to Seagrover and Toddbot for stopping by and saying hello during my Hurricane Dahlia live stream and a group hug. All right. Next, I have notes from David Glowd, who is missing the meeting today. A group hug for all the organized streamers and participants on CircuitPython Day. A hug to Naradoc for the work on non-QWERTY, non-US keyboards. I've used that for HID output and also for HID host keyboard input. And a parenthetical for me, I'm glad you did that and it worked because um, I, I wrote some of that code but relied on Naradoc for like the really heavy lifting. And par parenthetical. Uh, finally, David has a hug for Foamy Guy and whoever else contributed to the CircuitPython HTTP server library. Very interesting PR review stream in the presence of the pull request author. And that brings us to Katni. Hello. Hello. I have a group hug today. Thank you. I have notes uh, next from Kmatch, who has a hug for me, Jepler, and Retired Wizard for sharing your binaries for the ESP32S3 dot clock display board, as well as hugs to all. Next is Maker Melissa. I want to give a hug to you, Jeff, for creating a pull request for to remove the frozen libraries for the 0.2.x branch. Um, one to uh, Dan for answering a question I had uh, while he was out. Uh, a hug to Brent for reviewing a PR I made while Ann was out in the group hug to everyone else. Thank you. Uh, next is Michael Pokusa, who writes uh, a hug for Foamy Guy for their deep dive and review of a pull request on Adafruit HTTP server. We are in the home stretch now, uh, but Paul Cutler, you're up next. Thanks, Jeffler. I've got a hug for Toddbot for helping me out with some code for my new Matrix Portal project, and a big hug for Tyeth for helping me and a lot of others this past week with Adafruit IO. The help has been invaluable. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Hello, Scott. Hey, Jeff. Uh, for me, a uh, hug to ADCC for adding memory map support for the RP2. There's a pull up request out for it right now. And then a, a late minute, a last minute hug to Foamy Guy for filling in for me on Deep Dive last week. All right, thank you. And last up, a hug report from Toddbot to C. Grover for the really, really cool CircuitPython Chime library that's doing interesting Chime algorithms in Synthio. And that rounds up hug reports. Next is status updates, where, as I explained earlier, we want to hear what you are up to in the world of CircuitPython and slightly beyond. So take a few moments and, um, yeah, when I call on you, let us know what's up. So I have been working on the dot clock displays as my main thing. At this point, they work really well within reason. However, there are some limitations. In particular, um, when you try to use a higher pixel clock, and you're doing lots of things that access the um, PS RAM or the program flash, the display can tear and shift. We're hoping that that will get better when we update ESPIDF. Um, otherwise, we will, you know, just figure out what we need to do to get it up to the level of performing like we'd like it to. Um, other than that, I have to check that two more displays work and address some PR comments. And after that, I think it's done. Um, one of the things that we are potentially changing for this is how PSRAM is shared between CircuitPython and other stuff in the ESPIDF. Traditionally, we uh, just took all of the PSRAM for CircuitPython. Then when we added cameras, we added a way to return part of the PSRAM back to ESPIDF. And that doesn't quite work with the ESP LCD library. And so there's a different way um, just requires a little organization of the early startup, and I added that to the pull request this morning. And that means we won't need to make any changes in the ESPIDF um, to make LCD displays work, which is great. Um, and then in the future for this week, number one is finishing this PR, and number two is some planning with Scott and Dan. I had hoped to do the 1.20 merge, but I will be unable, I will be, sorry, unavailable in uh, October. So Scott and Dan and I will be meeting soon to discuss our options on that. Next, I have notes from Seagrover who writes, finished the windless IoT weather chimes project after an intense session with physical garden wind chimes to develop a realistic wind speed effect algorithm. Learned a bunch about wind chime physics and the influence of the breeze. 
and there is a link in the notes doc to the Weather Chimes repo on GitHub, as well as a project video on YouTube. Next, need to repair a few more wind patio chimes before characterizing the scales, overtones, and strike envelopes later this week. We have a lovely sounding copper chime and some nearly percussive ceramic bells that would be fun to model. Given our local weather, wind chimes and wind socks, flags, garbage cans, and trampolines get quite a bit of wind-related abuse. And thank you, Scott, for dropping those links in the chat. All right, still with Seagrover's notes, getting interested in continuing along the chime voice path to develop realistic synth voices in synthio such as plucked string instruments, particularly the banjo and the upright bass, as well as flutes and clarinets, all without resorting to waveform samples. The next experiment will be to use a note enveloped object to adjust a note's filter as the note is played in order to create more complex sounds. And finally, my spouse observed that I was spending a lot of time on physical and electronic chimes over the past few weeks. That's not a secret message that needs decoding, is it? The project did get me out on the patio for a few hours. Okay, next up, uh, Dan, let us know what's going on with you. Hey, as I mentioned, I'm back from a vacation, we had a nice break. Um, and also, as I mentioned, I'm working on our CircuitPython release, hopefully like today or tomorrow, that has uh, a fixed roots.pm, that's, that's a list of all the root certificates. So that um, some problems we've been having getting to certain sites on um, uh, when you're using SSL uh, could be fixed. So I'm, I'm getting, working my way through that right now. And then, uh, as Jeff mentioned, uh, Scott and Jeff and I will be talking, I hope that we'll be talking about the version 1.20 merge this weekend, also the uh, ESP IDF uh, updates. Okay. All right, next up is DJ Devon 3. Hello. I have six matrix panels now working with the matrix portal S3 for a display size of 128 by 96. I'm very happy with six as it makes a nice big display for my wall. Uh, I, you can do, you know, six with the two millimeter pitch panels, but then you get like a, a smaller display. So I have the five millimeter pitch panels and now I have this rather large display <laughs> array of display. Um, and I would like to get more to try and find out what the maximum amount is that I can drive, you know, the five volt serpentine through all of that and blit it all out. Um, because apparently I thought six would be, or four would be the max, but I've now added six. So we're up to six with the Matrix Portal S3. Uh, I have a thing that shows all six. Uh, I live streamed Hurricane Adalia uh, data Friday night used a Pico DVI, a BME 280, and OBS with overlay data from NOAA, local radar, and my own Adafruit IO dashboard. This was the main reason I purchased the Pico DVI. And when you live in Florida, the next hurricane is just a matter of time. So it's, it was kind of a neat thing to be able to stream that using Adafruit products and Adafruit IO. That's it. Thank you. Next up, I have notes from David Glode, who is missing the meeting. Uh, a keyboard and doing nothing weak. I did not do much or I don't remember anything. I invested in, investigated Neradoc's keyboard library documentation and generation website. I tested native support for keyboard on the USB host port uh, keyboard workflow. The previous attempt failed because you have to power with a GPI toggle to the USB port on the Feather RP2040 USB host. I could not locate documentation on how to detach the keyboard if you don't want it to output to the REPL and how to change the keyboard mapping. Any hint in the chat is welcome. And that brings us to you, Katni. Hello. Hey. So uh, I did a guide last week for the um, iSpy Pi Beret, which is a tiny little um, Pi adapter board that allows you to connect iSpy displays. Um, that uses Python, obviously, because it's on Raspberry Pi. Um, but that guides in moderation and should be live, uh, tomorrow at the latest. And then I'm starting this week on the Metro M7 micro SD, uh, board guide. And, um, that should be out in the next week and a half or so. 
Um, so if you picked up one of those, it's going to be very, very much like the Metro M7 uh, airlift board. So if you have one at the moment and you're interested in any information, check out that guide. Um, but this will cover, obviously, how to use um, your specific board uh, when it's good to go. And that's where I'm at. Thanks, Katni. I know a lot of people depend on those guides coming out to even know what the, what the stuff they bought is. All right. Uh, next up is Maker Melissa. Uh, let's see. Last week I finished up the Matrix Portal S3 message board guide. Um, I went through five Home Assistant guides and updated uh, them to use CircuitPython 8 and updated the Home Assistant syntax on them. And then I tested each of those projects. Um, I also started going through GitHub issues. And this week I'm going to continue going through GitHub issues. And that's where I'm at. Thanks. Next up is Paul. Hello again. Hello. I finished my first S3 matrix portal project. When I choose an album on my Python web app, it downloads and converts the cover art, including gamma correction for the album, and sends an MQTT message that the matrix portal downloads and then displays on a 64 by 64 matrix. Um, I even blogged about it, and there's a link in the notes document. Um, starting my second S3 matrix portal project, I have a mic plugged into a Raspberry Pi that listens to the music I'm playing and records a sample and sends it to Shazam IO to, to identify it. I want to then send the song and artist data to another matrix, um, but I'm having some issues with MQTT blocking and don't have async working quite yet. Thanks. All right, more work to do. And to round out the section of status updates, it is you, Scott. Hello. <clears throat> like I said earlier, uh, I moved into a new office space that's nice and echoey. Uh, I'm not fully settled, but the computers are up and running. Um, so I'm going to be doing some more organization. Um, besides that, I'm getting caught up after the long weekend, going through emails and reviews. Uh, after I do that, I'll be continuing work on the ESP IDF5 update. Uh, in particular, I'm still getting the SDK config updater improved. It actually reads the K configs now, which is cool, uh, and only writes back the settings that are different. Uh, which means that all the SDK configs will hopefully be a lot more concise, which will be good. Uh, it also reworks how flash and RAM settings are done uh, with the idea that we can actually be more aggressive in, in those settings. Um, it's taken a little while, though, because I'm updating all of the board's SDK config, and so I'm trying to figure out, like, you know, making tweaks to the updater as I do it to minimize, uh, you know, if I missed a particular setting that a particular board has and, and, and doing all that sort of stuff. So uh, that's what I'm up to. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having a discussion about the, the MicroPython merge as well. Okay, thank you, everybody. That concludes status updates. For In the Weeds, we have one topic. So Maker Melissa, please take it away. Um, I was just wondering when it looks like we will be able to create a CircuitPython 9 alpha release. And that's it. So, from my understanding, and uh, Dan and Scott, please chime in if I get this wrong, we want to wait until the most disruptive changes are kind of in the rearview mirror. And those are the IDF5 update and the merge of MicroPython 1.20. Um, okay. And I think. Those are kind of a when it gets done, but that's what we want to concentrate on right now. Okay, thanks. Scott, do you I, want I to would say, or correct that? It, I, I would I would say it's not even IDF five. It's really so we don't have MPY format merge format churn because the MPY format is going to change twice. Um. It's or it's changed once now, and so we don't. That, that, that's the main thing. Yep. Is, okay, so we're not okay. holding it for the IDF five update, just for the one hundred and twenty merge. Yeah, because IDF five is, it's not going to be a visible. Well, I mean, there may be invisible in some sense. It may be visible in some sense, but it's not going to provoke an incompatibility necessarily. Right. I don't think I do betas until the IDF churn has is finished but um i mean I well, let's say if there's things that you want 
we, we just want to put a lot more stuff into the 8.2 releases. So if there's a backport of a board or something like that, you know, we, we, we're encouraging people to PR things against 8.2. Uh, okay. Rather, rather than um, against the main. I mean, it's conceivable that we might even have an 8.3, but so far we don't need that yet. If there were some, you know, notable API change or something. Uh, for me, it was mostly about the CircuitPython bitmap tools. Uh, is that an eight? I, uh, that's for the fixed alpha the, change. Yeah, yeah. For, for instance. Yeah, I think that'll have to wait for a nine alpha to come out because that did involve an incompatible change, uh, to my recollection. Okay. That works. OK. All right. Thank you, everyone who had things to uh, chip in about that item. And I will go ahead and wrap up the meeting. This has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for September 5th, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. To support Adafruit and CircuitPython, especially those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing your hardware from adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit, and the audio version will be on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday, that's the 11th, at the usual time of 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. The meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join at any time, by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thank you, everybody.